basically the official uniform for hip hop. Everyone wanted to be seen in one, and some of the rare editions were worth thousands of dollars. Even though the shirts were meant for me, the package ended up in the hands of a guy named Marcus, who was our tour manager. He knew I always buy my own clothes, so he decided to take a couple of the jerseys for himself. He felt that since he was the tour manager, they were some of the spoils he was entitled to. Bangham Smurf didn't see it that way, though. Bangham was someone from Southside that I was considering signing to G-Unit, so I'd taken him on the road to help him get some exposure. Bangham had potential, but he made the mistake of thinking just being on the road meant he already made it. He started drinking his own juice before he proved anything. He didn't have a single. He didn't have any buzz. The girls didn't look at him and say, who's the cute one? To the world, he was just another dude on stage shouting the end of my lines. That experience alone got him so gassed that he thought the rules didn't apply to him. The morning after the Philly show, we were scheduled to get on the bus at 5 a.m. and head to the next city. But instead of my alarm clock, I got an early morning wake up from the sounds of a fight taking place under my window. I pulled back the shades to see an unexpected sight. Marcus and Bangham rolling around in the street, trading blows over a Michelin S jersey. It's mine, I could hear Bangham shouting. Nah, that ain't George, yelled Marcus. Yours had a piece of gum stuck on the side. This is mine. Apparently, Bangham had decided one of those jerseys was his. And when Marcus wouldn't hand it over, Bangham was just going to take it. Not what I wanted to deal with at the crack of dawn. I went outside and immediately broke them up. Then I asked Bangham what the hell he was thinking. Nah, Fifth, Bangham started to explain. He's trying to take my shirt. I had to check him. I wasn't trying to hear it. Man, you know I told everyone, no fights from the store. Then I looked at Marcus and said, point to Bangham, get this punk a bus ticket. He's going home. It wasn't until that moment that Bangham realized I wasn't playing. When I said zero tolerance, I meant zero. If you're there, he'd have plenty of time to drink his own juice back in Queens. Bangham thought he was bigger than the crew, but it turned out he didn't know how to move on his own. He started working with some other local rappers. And from time to time, we try to get me to support them. But nothing really caught my ear. Without my support, no one wanted to give him a break. Instead of being on the road with me, making legal money and seeing the world, he eventually caught a case back in Queens. He asked me to bail him out, but I explained to him that wasn't my job. He eventually got deported back to Trinidad, where he was born. To this day, he blames me, not himself, for his situation.